Now, once I open up the dashboard, I can see all the resources that are running within my cluster. And right away, when I'm in services, I can filter by the different resources within my cluster, by the different types of resources. I Hello there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anais and on this channel we explore everything related to Kubernetes and the cloud native ecosystem. Now, if you're running microservices on your Kubernetes cluster, in some organizations even thousands of microservices simultaneously, you will sooner or later run into a situation where some of those microservices will throw errors. They might not work. Some things will go wrong. And if they are interdependent, one microservice depend on another, the likelihood that one microservice won't work because of the deployment of another is very high. And in those cases, it's really difficult to debug the root cause of what's actually going on. Now, what tools can you use to debug your microservice applications? Well, you can use kubectl, kubectl, describe, resource, namespace, and so on. You can also use a tool called KNNS. Now, in both cases, you will have to manually go through the resources, go through the logs, see which <laughs> errors are there, which events happened on your Kubernetes cluster. Separately, you will keep an eye out on your different monitoring solutions, on Prometheus, on Grafana, on those dashboards, as well as on Git and other <laughs> tools that give you further information of what deployments have happened over time. However, in those cases, it will be on you to make the manual connection between those different resources, between the event logs and the different um, resources that are not working correctly in your Kubernetes cluster and those monitoring solutions. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to showcase a fairly new platform across the cloud native ecosystem. Now, this platform will help you and your team to troubleshoot the resources within your Kubernetes cluster. This platform is called Commodore. When I reached out and I saw the platform, I was like, yeah, that might be a really interesting tutorial to do since it's different from current solutions. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to showcase how you can get started with Commodore. It's really straightforward. Any engineer should be able to use Commodore to help them interact with the resources running within your Kubernetes cluster and fix those resources in case of errors. Next, I'm going to walk you through the Commodore platform. What are the different information that you can gain from the platform itself? How does it improve your processes? And lastly, I'm going to showcase the different integrations that you can set up right now on Commodore. Also remember, as with every video tutorial on my channel, there's a written guide as well. If you prefer the written guide, it's linked below. So check out the blog post if you prefer the written guide and let's get started. So this is the Commodore website. As you can see, you will get some really nice dashboards that showcase the health status of your different resources. Now, when you get started with Commodore, you have to request a free trial. So you basically just have to reach out to them and within days or hours, they will give you access to the platform itself to a trial. Now, when I log in now, it will usually lead me to my Google account. Now, you can also add team members to your account, to your platform right away, just by providing their email. And they also have a nice time zone functionality where you can query resources based on your time's time zone. So you don't have to rethink of, okay, this happened in GitHub at this time and this happened in Commodore at that time. Is it the same time zone? No, you can have all your resources displayed in the same time zone. So as you can see, I don't have any resources right now connected to my Commodore account since I deleted the Kubernetes cluster that Commodore was connected to. You connect Commodore through a Helm chart that's installed within your Kubernetes cluster. When you sign up for the first time and you add a Kubernetes cluster, it will have you a little button in the middle that will provide you the exact commands that you will use to install the Helm chart with your account key. Now, we will need this account key, this API key that's here within my integration section. So you go ahead to the integration section. These are my different integrations that are set up right now. We will dive into those at the end of the video. And you will need this API key over here and the documentation that you can find here to add the Helm chat to your Kubernetes cluster. 
Okay, so for this case, you need to have Helm installed. If you're completely new to Helm, I suggest you to check out some of my other tutorials that are linked up there <laughs> um, so you can get started with Helm. Now, Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes that allows you to easily basically pack a different Kubernetes manifests and also customize those manifests within your Helm chart. Now, we need to add the Helm chart to our Helm CLI. So we're going to use the first command that's provided in the Git repository. Helm repo add Commodore IO. And then there's the link to the Commodore Helm chart. So we're going to add that. In my case, it already exists. But in between you using Helm and different Helm charts from the web, you want to update your repositories. Since there might be changes to those Helm charts that you will only fetch when you update your Helm charts. And then we can go ahead and we can install Commodore on our Kubernetes cluster. Now, in this case, I have to change the API key. I have to provide my API key right here. So we're going to take our API key from the Commodore platform and we're going to paste it right here. This is my API key. Don't worry, I changed it <laughs> before publishing the video. So in this case, we also want to provide our cluster name and we call it demo cluster. Let's go ahead and install it and query the resource to see that Commodore is actually installed. So kubectl get namespace. And as you can see, here's a Commodore namespace added. Let's do this again to make sure that you see it. Here's my Commodore namespace. And then here I have already in this Kubernetes cluster, my demo namespace. I'm going to show you in a second what's actually running my demo namespace. But let's query all the resources, get all in namespace Commodore. Commodore. And these are all the resources that Commodore is running. So Commodore is pushing the information from within my Kubernetes cluster to the Commodore platform, which is far more secure, then accessing your Kubernetes cluster from outside and pulling resources out. Pushing resources out of your cluster is more secure. So now that they are all running, we want to go ahead and we want to open the Commodore platform again. Psst, psst. I have an announcement directly from Commodore. They are at KubeCon North America. So make sure to check out their booth, both virtual and physical, I think, too, for more information, to ask questions, for amazing demos, and for the chance to win amazing prizes, such as flight tickets, I've been told. So make sure to visit them, say hi, tell them Anaïs nice sent you with a smile. <laughs> now, once I open up the dashboard, I can see all the resources that are running within my cluster. And right away, when I'm in services, I can filter by the different resources within my cluster, by the different types of resources. I can filter by cluster. So if you run multiple Kubernetes cluster and Commodore is installed on all of them, you can filter by Kubernetes cluster. And then you can filter by namespace and whether or not your resources are healthy, as well as by the type of those resources. Now, I have here my monitoring namespace, and this has just my entire Prometheus and Grafana stack installed. And then I have my demo namespace. Now, the demo namespace is installed based on this application. And this application runs Grafana, Prometheus, and a ping and pong application. So the ping and pong application basically interact with each other. You can also have a look at the demo that's right here on Katakoda. So you can just click through the demo scenario. So these are all the resources installed here. They will become important in my next tutorial on Commodore. And then I have here my Commodore application namespace. As you can see, there's one service running. And then I have my app, which is just basically a basic React application. As you can see, there are two pods running. So it basically provides me information on how many pods are running, as well as on whether or not those resources are healthy or unhealthy. If they would be unhealthy, they would show it up in red. Now, we can click into those resources. And then we can see when have they been deployed. So you can also see here related resources. So these are all the related resources to this application. And this is especially handy if 
<laughs> another application breaks that then affects this ping application. Now the ping application is just responsible to ping the Pong application that then responsible for Pong within this scenario. Now everything looks okay here. Here's when the service discovery was just added. So as you can see, Commodore didn't know about this application before when I deployed it because I just installed the Commodore agent on top of my Kubernetes cluster. And now it knows that basically this is the point when it discovered the service. So I can see also additional information, such as all the changes that have been made. So if I make any changes to this deployment in Git, and I redeploy the application, I will see the changes here as well. I will also see additional integrations that I have set up. So for example, my Slack integration, my GitHub integration. While the services provide me with a nice overview of the different resources, the different parts that are currently running within my cluster, and allow me to click into those, the events section, which is pretty new, provides me with additional information on the events that took place over time. So it's basically a cumulative timeline of the different events. The more deployments you will have taken place, the more active this graph will be. So you can see here an overview of the different events that took place across your entire resources. So for example, if the resources within your monitoring namespace are going wrong, are off, right? Then you can filter for those resources here right away and you can see the connection of the different events that took place across those resources within the namespace. You can also set up multiple namespaces if those are connected and see the changes that took place between those different namespaces, between those different areas within your Kubernetes cluster. Now you can again click into your different resources and see the different changes that took place over time. Something else that I really like about Commodore is that it allows me to query the pod status and logs right away. It's a live update of the different logs and events within that resource. So I have here my resource, I have to state the different information on that resource, how many resources it has, when it was deployed, when it was last changed, whether it's running, what's the current state. And then I can describe the resource so I can see the YAML. I can see the events, the different events for that resource. And then I can query all the logs for this container. In this case, it's the Grafana container and then the Grafana dashboard. And I can see all the logs listed right here. And I don't have to go through kubectl, describe to, <laughs> or get logs to see additional information on that resource. Now, as you can see here, the different annotations for this resource, for this application, you will want to add additional annotations on your different deployments, depending on which integrations you're using within the Commodore platform. Now, as you can see, you can set up a bunch of different integrations. The team also consistently adds new integrations. And if you have any requests from your team, any integration you really need to make Commodore work for you, I'm sure you can put in a request and they're quick to respond. Now, as you can see, those are the different integrations that you can set up. I already have these integrations set up. As you can see, here's our Kubernetes integration that we used at the beginning. Now I've also set up my Grafana integration. You can set up for Slack and Grafana and so on, multiple integrations. That's why they don't appear in the same way as for example, GitHub and Kubernetes. Now, going to the Grafana dashboard. This is the Grafana dashboard that's or from the Grafana that is installed within my demo namespace. Now I'm just forwarding that Grafana from a demo namespace and accessing it here. Now, all you have to do is go to the notifications channel and then you can add a new channel. And the information you have to put in is provided right here. When you click on install integration, here are all the different steps that you have to follow. It took me literally like 30 seconds to set that up. I hope this video was useful. Let me know in the comments, what tools are you currently using for your troubleshooting process? How are you currently debugging your applications running inside of your Kubernetes cluster? Make sure to sign up to Commodore for a free trial. Try it out. See how it changes your troubleshooting process. I would love to know. Also link below is a link to the community chat where you can ask questions, get involved, share resources, share your own content. I hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.